you know what? I love FPGAs. I've been a proud member of the I Love Field Programmable Gatorades Club for years now. And the best part? They keep getting better. Low latency, integration, and flexibility? Yes! And don't even get me started on that reprogrammability part. And you know who else loves FPGAs? Video system developers. With the demand for faster and faster speeds, more and more different markets requiring video content, and expectations for better and better video quality and advanced analytics growing by the day, FPGAs have found themselves in quite a sweet spot in video designs these days. And I, for one, couldn't be happier. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today's video and vision designs are definitely becoming smarter these days. And in order to keep up with the varied demands that these designs require, we need end-to-end intelligence and flexible silicon that can deal with a wide variety of workloads to get the job done. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Omi Oleide joins me to discuss how Intel FPGAs are positioned to take on even the hardest video and vision designs, and how you can get started on your own FPGA video applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Intel. Hi, Omi. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Nice to be here. Okay, great. Now, we are talking about using Intel FPGAs to develop video and vision solutions today. But before we get started, Omi, can you set the stage for us? What kind of trends are you seeing driving the video market in particular? Sure. Yep. So what we're seeing in video are kind of three main trends. One, image sensor proliferation. Two, diverse use cases, and three, increasing use of AI and analytics. Now, let's talk for a moment about the image sensor proliferation. We have manufacturing efficiencies, which are helping to lead to an increasing number of pixels per dollar on a wafer. Now, as the cost of manufacturing pixels goes down and the resolutions increase, image sensors are becoming ubiquitous. There are more and more locations from in the hand, as in smartphones, to the house looking at the environment. To vehicles, you know, these days cars have so many image sensors. One single car can have tens of image sensors on them to help both drivers as well as the car to navigate roads. Image sensors are in office buildings, looking at the environment, in public transportation, airplanes, space, everywhere. So now as image sensors are increasing in the environment, the data flow through the network is also increasing and it's increasing fast, exponentially. And with this increase in video data, we have quality expectations increasing as well. And so this is affecting things like the bit depth needed to capture the video. So there are standards evolving to handle these increasing speeds and increasing data flows and increasing quality requirements. And also, with image sensors showing up everywhere, this expectation of responsiveness of the systems that are using the sensors is steadily going up amongst users like you and I. So real-time requirements are becoming more prevalent and stringent. The second trend that we're seeing are things like diverse use cases. So different types of processing in one system, where one system is taking care of pretty much everything, from the video processing to the audio processing to communications and other functions. And this is going across a number of industries. We see it in in broadcast, we see it in pro-AV and and digital signage, but also medical, healthcare, automotive, consumer, industrial vision, and many other industries and applications. And the third maiden trend, just to set the stage, AI and increase the intelligence of these systems. So as the data is going up through the network and through the networks and through the devices, what we're seeing is the use of AI and the use of analytics to understand that data, to process that data, and to make the systems that are using that data more responsive to end users. And this is going from client devices, the endpoints, all the way through the edge and to the cloud. All right. And Omi, I would imagine that with these changes in the market, that the challenges in this space are going to get even harder, right? 
That is right. Yeah, FPGAs are helping with these challenges by providing a number of key capabilities to deal with them. So our FPGA portfolio starts with our Max family, which is our smaller devices, and we're currently at Max 10, and then range through Cyclone 10, which is the next level up in terms of device density, ARIA, and ARIA 10 is our latest there, Stratix 10, and we're very pleased to announce the rollout of our Azilex family, which is built on Intel 10 nanometer process. Now, FPGAs can help with those challenges by providing flexibility, the ability to integrate diverse workloads, real-time interaction, and AI. So let's take video standards evolving at a faster pace. This flexibility to adopt new video technologies is due to the intrinsically flexible silicon that FPGAs are made out of. As FPGA standards evolve and requirements change, the FPGA can be reprogrammed to keep up. Intel FPGAs enable quick customization of the new products at the hardware level by making use of high-performing core and flexible transceivers to accommodate a diverse range of high-speed interfaces. And Intel FPGAs reconfigurability allows for continuous optimization and performance improvements to quickly upgrade existing products, which is an overriding requirement for top-quality applications in a video market characterized by rapidly evolving standards and requirements. The reprogrammability of Intel FPGAs allows designers to not only respond to these trends in the market as they emerge, but also to develop solutions aligned with the current market trends before they change. Now, demand for more complex use cases is handled by FPGAs by their intrinsic ability to use IP serving different functions and program them into one device, the FPGAs. As markets continue to evolve and new equipment availability leads to new interoperability issues. The FPGA technology can help overcome these in the field, while other devices may lack that flexibility. Stitching together multiple chips can make hardware design more complex. But with Intel FPGAs, we're able to significantly reduce the number of hardware components on the board by integrating all these features in a single FPGA device. And so this simplifies board layout and can streamline issue root cause debugging and reduce upgradability risk. And FPGAs are able to provide that performance and differentiation needed for customers to win market share for more established industry players. Now, real-time interactivity requirements are one of the areas where FPGAs really shine because they enable low latency processing. See, a key feature of FPGAs is that they give you fine-grained control at the clock level of transmission and processing. So this makes FPGAs ideal for implementing real-time requirements. The determinism and clock level control of latency is what makes FPGAs a critical ingredient in applications where there are little or no margin for error, such as vision-based industrial robotics and medical surgery. And then AI. AI can be integrated within the FPGA as part or all of the system operating in the FPGA. FPGAs allow designers to keep up with these new advances in AI, in machine learning, and in deep learning by being able to implement all of these within the FPGA, or again, in part, along with other silicon, in order to balance trade-offs between performance, accuracy, size, power, and cost. All right, Omi. So speaking of IP, FPGA IP is incredibly valuable in this area. Can we take a closer look at what Intel offers in terms of IP? Sure. So we bucket our IP in two major blocks. One is connectivity and the other is video processing. So looking a little bit more at what we offer in our connectivity portfolio, we have DisplayPort, HDMI, SDI, and HDCP IP. Our DisplayPort IP is compliant with DisplayPort 1.4 as well as 2.0, and it offers four-channel multi-stream transfer support and supports up to eight channels of audio. Our HDMI IP is compliant with 2.0, and we also have 2.1, HDMI 2.1 IP and it supports fixed rate link, FRL, as well as deep color modes and up to eight channels of audio. Our SDI IP supports the 12G SDI standard and has support for direct source image formatting and dual link mapping. And our HDCP IP, which is available for evaluation on our ARIA 10 development board, is certified for 1.4 and 2.3 versions and certified with HDMI and DisplayPort. Okay, Omi, so what about the video processing IP? Yes, our video processing IP what we call the VIP suite, consists of over 20 IP functions. These functions are supported on a range of our Intel FPGAs. The video processing IP allows for 
rapid new design creation, as well as easy integration with custom value-added features. Our video IP is easily integrated with our video connectivity IP cores, such as the HDMI DisplayPort and SDI cores that I mentioned previously. And it easily integrates with partner IP cores, covering SMPTE 2110, MIPI, and others as well. Our VIP suite, our video processing IP, supports a wide range of resolutions, frames per second, and bits per color, such as going up to 16 bits per color, over 120 frames per second, and support up to 8K and HDR. All right, Omi. So what is the easiest way for engineers to evaluate Intel connectivity and video processing IP and start developing their own FPGA video applications? Yeah, that's a great question. So the easiest way is to use what we call our UDX10 example design. So this is based on the Intel ARIA 10 FPGA, and it uses the HDMI 2.0 core as well as uh, HDMI 2.0 daughter card to do video format conversion. The Intel ARIA 10 based UHD video reference design integrates the HDMI 2.0 video connectivity IP core with a video processing pipeline based on the IP from the VIP suite for a complete development platform for use in FPGA video product development. So customers benefit from a robust portfolio of in-house video IP supported by Intel, and fast time to market with the latest flexible IP for evolving video standards and resolutions. The UDX10 reference design provides customers with a complete development platform for use in video product development. Okay, so Omi, do you have an example of this in a real-life application? Yes. Here is a block diagram of the UDX10 design. So you see UD HDMI 2.0 coming in through a daughter card. There's some formatting that takes place, and then it goes through a scaler, which is an important part and then it goes through a mixer where you can add graphics and other overlays onto the video before sending it back out through the HDMI 2.0 port. This has been used by customers across industry verticals and particularly in pro AVM broadcasts to create market leading designs. Okay, so I can definitely see how the Intel FPGA connectivity and video and image processing IP, as well as that Intel ARIA 10 video reference design, puts this all together in a a simple, readily customizable project. But Omi, what sorts of design applications could my audience build and eventually product guys using the reference design as a starting point? Well, let's see an example of a demo created from this design, which takes both HDMI and DisplayPort in, cross-converts between the two, and then outputs HDMI and DisplayPort. In this demo, we will show you how you can use Intel FPGA's video and image processing IP suite to create your own video application, such as a video wall. Intel FPGA's are used in a wide variety of video applications today, such as video walls for digital signage, cameras and other broadcast equipment, remote video access such as KVMs, keyboard video mouse, or video streaming products. FPGA's are not only used in pro AV applications, but also in endoscopes, industrial imaging cameras, and automotive information systems. This demo exemplifies a multi-connectivity 4-input video wall with additional video conditioning and video effects such as scaling, clipping, color conversions, and interlacing. The Intel FPGA Video and Image Processing IP Suite makes this demo possible by providing a flexible structure to build a custom video processing pipeline with high-performance off-the-shelf video IP cores as well as low latency processing, creating a smooth video experience. In this demonstration, we have one Intel laptop streaming video over HDMI, and one Intel laptop streaming video over DisplayPort to the Intel ARIA 10 FPGA development kit through the Bitec HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4 daughter cards, respectively, both of which are directly connected to the Intel ARIA 10 FPGA development kit's FMC ports. On screen now is a representative block diagram showing the video processing pipeline on the Intel ARIA 10 FPGA development kit. Each of the video streams is ingested from the PC by using the off-the-shelf HDMI and DisplayPort IP cores, which support any resolutions, frame rates, or color spaces. The deinterlacer, chroma resampler, color space converter, and downscaler are used to precondition the video to a common resolution and color space. The duplicator then creates a copy of each 1080p video stream to simulate 
a four input video wall scenario. The streams are then merged into one 4K stream to create the four screen video wall. The demo has different modes that are controlled by buttons on the Intel ARIA 10 FPGA development kit. By pushing this button, I'm changing which video stream is being outputted and back to the video wall mode. By pressing a second button, I can clip and output one of the video streams or downscale and output it to the display. By flipping a dip switch, I can switch from the 4K HDMI display to the 4K DisplayPort display and back again. Intel FPGA's video and image processing IP suite gives you the ability to get to market fast with your state-of-the-art custom video products. Start designing today by downloading our Intel Cortis Prime design software as well as the Intel Video IP and reference designs into our modular Intel FPGA development kits. You can find more info from the links on the screen. All right, Omi, so if I'm ready to get started, what should I do? What are my next steps? Great, yeah. So first, urge you to download the UDX10 reference design to get immediate access to the project files and documentation. You can evaluate the Intel Connectivity and Intel Video Processing IP for free using the Open Core Plus evaluation license. So this includes the VIP suite and the HDMI IP core. The HDMI 2.0 FMC daughter card and the ARIA 10 GX FPJ development kit are available for purchase now. Get creative and start developing your own state-of-the-art custom video products with Intel FPGA. Excellent. Well, Omi, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Intel. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.